Good day, YouTube. Uh, my name is James DeGrazia. Uh, my channel here that you're watching today, um, Fire Tide Fishing. Um, there's two things that I like in life. One is leadership and working towards a common goal, such as firefighting, and two, doing the same thing, but with fishing. Um, so I've had the opportunity to fish within Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Um, I'm originally from Canada, um, born in Ontario, moved to British Columbia, did some fishing there, moved to Alberta where I lived for about seven years, lived right on a lake fishing, um, traveled down to Mexico, did a lot of stuff with fishing for Mai Mai, dolphin, uh, tuna, um, marlin fishing is something that I'm really passionate into. Um, I have an experience from fishing everything from bass, largemouth bass, lake trout, pike, uh, walleye, all the way up to fishing marlin and tuna. So this is really exciting for me to start this. I've done some guiding previous in my life um, where I've worked um, on a large fishing resort in Loch Sewell. Um, started off just building cabins, you know, fishing, off hours, doing some help around the camp just so I could get used to the boats, um, did stuff like that. And that transpired into me, you know, looking at weather patterns, topography, where the fish are going to be. And then basically I'd go out in the morning um, with the topography and the structure that I knew on the lake based off the wind forecast and the weather. A um, bunch of other things go into that, like, you know, moon phases and all that other stuff, air pressure and all that fun stuff, but it, it's a lot. So you got to keep it basic when it comes to fishing. It's going to be the structure, the water clarity, the wind direction. Um, so that'll be one video that I'll focus on here later on down the line. But this video that I want to bring up is very important because um, right now in Texas, um, things are starting to warm up. Fish are starting to move from the deeper, colder water into the shallower water right now. They're moving up on structure. They're looking to spawn, um, especially if we're looking at bass, white bass, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, you know, crappie. Um, the walleye in this area right now, um, I'm in Amarillo, Texas, so Lake Meredith. Um, the reports are coming out that they're, they're, they're deeper right now, obviously. Um, <clears throat> kind of in the same areas where you find the channel cats and the catfish and stuff like that. So um, that's kind of where they're going to be right now. Um, so I want to focus on lure color colors. So... There's a lot that goes into picking out a lure and why you're picking out a specific color. And all that has to do um, with is going to be your water clarity, obviously, as I said previously. Um, and as well as like the depth of water that you're fishing in. Um, a lot of times if the fish are active and they're biting, um, they're going to hit your lure. Um, if they're hungry, all you have to do is trigger you know, the fish's instincts within their, their small brain. A lot of fish have brains the size of your pinky all the way up to a walnut. Um, so their natural instinct is to follow off of their receptors that they have on their body. So they have nostrils to smell, but they also smell and feel with their lateral lines. So I pick up vibrations, um, oil secretions in the water, um, such like that. So they'll, they'll go off of that as well as their eyes, but they're, the function of their eyes are probably, I would say, the least, um, especially because water clarity changes so much, so they rely on all the other patterns. So picking out a lure, you want to pick something that's going to maximize as well as affect pretty much all of those together, right? So you're going to be looking at you know something that rattles for the vibration aspect, something that smells good, um, something that, that you know is bright if the water's dark. Um, something that's bright if the water's deep. Um, so all that comes into play. As well as there's some th colors that fish just don't see. Um, there's reports out there that a walleye won't see the color pink after a specific depth and stuff like that. 
Um, I wouldn't read too much into that because I have caught fish on a pink lure in deep water and it was a walleye, a large walleye. But keep that in mind that, you know, <laughs> that is just something that, you know, people have come up with by testing, you know, walleye in a tank, fishing atmosphere, stuff like that. Um, so let's go into a chart. I got a chart here. Um, it's going to bring up kind of the idea of what is, what's the big picture of all of this. Um, so I'll bring the chart up. We take a look at it, go deep into it. Um, don't want to go too, too far gone in it, but at the same point in time, you know, I'm here for you. You know what I mean? So remember to subscribe, to like, to share, um, this is my new passion is to get out of here and try to, you know, teach all y'all out there how to, you know, bring in you know, not the easy fish, but start easy, you know, start small, you know, aim small, miss small feature. If you can maximize your efficiency with, with smaller, you know, easy to target fish and then move yourself up to catching a tuna or a marlin. Um, that's kind of where we're going to go with this. So I hope you're you're interested and I've piqued your interest to dive right into this and go straight, straight to the deep end. The deep end is going to be where we're going to go catch some marlin. You're going to go on some trips with me. I got a new boat coming. Um, I got a 2014. Um, it's a 22 foot inside, 26 feet, you know, bow to the bow roller to the motor. So it's going to be pretty fun it's gonna be large as a center console um it's gonna be powered by mercury four stroke so it's it's gonna move through the water really well with that that motor that's gonna be on there it's just uh, gonna be a 150 which is plenty horsepower to do it um but eventually i'm gonna gear it up to running dual motors for fuel efficiency and all that other stuff um so we'll go into more than that so i'll do a boat reveal um here in the next couple of weeks once it arrives in uh, the Panhandle, Texas. And then uh, my plans are to take that down to Cabo San Lucas, as well as to Puerto Rendezas, um, Galveston, Corpus Christi, uh, we'll be going out to South Padre, um, as well as we'll be taking on the local inland lakes here. Um, there's pretty great places to fish here in the Panhandle, as well as in New Mexico, Oklahoma, um, and then towards the Fort Worth area, there's a lot of uh, reservoirs there that we could hit up. Um, it's a little tricky in, in Texas because a lot of the lakes aren't natural lakes, they're man-made lakes. That being said, there is fish in there because they put them in there. So let's go, all right? So we're going to go bring up the chart. As I was saying previously, feel free to hit us up on social media. We got Fire Tide Fishing. Um, this is currently on Facebook. Um, we got a YouTube channel, uh, just Fire Tide Fishing on YouTube uh, that you're watching right now, obviously, hopefully. Um, I'll be sharing the link on Facebook, so it'll feel cross-reference. Um, <clears throat> so feel free to come on here, take a look. Um, we got some good uh, videos on here from Cabo San Lucas. Um, all the way to one of our videos that we just did in um, South Padre. Um, so we'll go into the chart. The chart itself, we'll bring it. All right, and it's gonna break down everything, as I said previously, based off of, you know, the water clarity, the depth, the forage, uh, the bottom color and the weather. All right. So we'll get you a closer look at this right here for you guys. All right. So when we're looking at muddy water, right, obviously the clarity of the water is dark, right? So we're going to want things that are lighter. So you're, you're going to see all the bright colors like chartreuses, your whites, your pearls. They're all going to be highlighted as useful. Um, some of the other ones like sparkly flake of course works out good because it's a combination of of a lighter white color like a pearl mixed with speckles to take advantage of any of that sunlight or or anything that's coming through the water that's going to reflect off of it 
Um, and then black. Black works good because it's high contrast against water clarity. Um, so when you get into your, your lightly stained water, same same effect. Um, once it's not muddy, you can start going into the darker colors. Not necessarily the greens and the natural colors, but anything that's going to give you that high contrast. And once again, like I said, the blacks, you know, the June bug purple is coming in, the green pumpkin color is coming in, right? And then when you go to a lighter stain, all of a sudden you can start using those colors. Um, like pink, as I was saying, um, tends to, you know, if you're using it for walleye and such, um, their eyes don't pick up that color for some reason. Don't step away from that because if you're comboing it with like live bait, dead bait, etc., um, it should be working fine. And then you'll see like the bright colors are starting to drop off because that adds to something that doesn't look natural in the water when you got light. Well, um, uh, clear water, they're going to start seeing those bright colors. So you want to step away from those and start going into more natural tones. Um, that's when you're getting like the perch colors and such. Um, bait fish colors, trying to simulate the bait fish, the natural bait fish. Um, so you see those colors still working on. So that, that kind of, you know, covers off everything when it comes to water clarity. And then we're going to go depth. So depth we're going to go anywhere between zero and five feet, right? Um, so basically, you, you can start using those normal tones that matches up to the sand and everything. Because the water column, you can pretty much kind of lift your lure up. If you're jigging or casting, you're going to be pretty much hitting that water column. We go anywhere deeper here to the five to ten feet. Um, you're looking at, you know, those, those natural colors still coming into play as well as you start going into your brighter colors. And then you go really deeper than that and then your brighter colors start adding to the spectrum. And then when you go deeper water, even your brighter colors are even more into the spectrum. So I think that kind of makes sense into what I was uh, describing. And that could be all the way from your, um, your soft plastics, your jigs, to your crankbaits. Um, so basically the forage, um, if you're trying to simulate something specific, like either the bait fish, bluegill, crawfish, etc., cetera, um, these are the kind of colors you want to stick to because um, you're trying to simulate that bait fish. That's pretty much how I like to look at it. Um, basically, if it's a bait fish, you're looking for those natural colors, um, which are going to be the white pearl color. Um, you could even go into the sparkly flake. Um, so that works kind of good. Crayfish, obviously, you're going to go to the darker colors uh, to simulate, um, you know, that high contrast. Uh, bottom color, um, nothing really you could really do about that unless you for certain know. Um, the best case is if you're following the first three, you should be all right. And then weather, okay, so clear weather. Um... That's where you kind of want to stick with yeah. your, your lighter ones. Um, <clears throat> so clear weather, you want to go to basically um, anything that's going to simulate your bait fish. So clear water, um, let's go with these ones at the top. Windy, right? Obviously, you're going to get more turbulence in the water. So basically, the water could be clear. But there's going to be a lot of things moving in. And generally, if you have some wind and some water movement, the fish are going to be pretty active. That's the way I like to look at it. If it's clear and it's not windy, um, a lot of fish are going to be in structure. Um, or they're going to be in the shallows. Um, or they're going to be deep. So it all depends on what type of fish you're targeting on. Um, cloudy, overcast. Um, that's when you start seeing a lot of the darker contrast colors starting to drop off. So this is like the nitty gritty. You could see this chart on here. You could print it out, carry it with you guys on our website. Um, uh, once again, feel free to take a look at these at any time. Um, we're going to be posting more useful information like this as we move further um, into the deep end when it comes to fishing. So I um, hope you really enjoyed that. Um, basically stay tuned. We're going to have some big things ahead of us. Um, new boats should be coming here shortly. We'll do an unre un unveiling video for that. 
I'll do a water test. We'll go over the, the significant difference of having a boat with um, a good beam. Um, we'll go basically off of the bow to beam ratio um, in choppy water and stuff like that. We'll cover off a lot of aspects on that. So look forward to bonding with all of you. Once again, I said, please feel free to follow, like, comment, and share our videos. Appreciate all y'all. Um, stay safe out there. COVID's been, you know, horrible for everybody. Um, now's a chance when we start opening up where we can fully take advantage of what, you know, Mother Nature has given to all of us to enjoy. So have yourself a great day and keep those lines tight.